Hi friends, my name is Shukesh and today I am going to present you a full in-depth review of the Moto G4 Plus. I have been using this device for a while now and for the price I feel that this is probably the best phone to buy. I mean there are lots of devices and you are quite confused. So in this review I will also compare this Moto G4 Plus with Galaxy J7 and the ZUK Z1. Well enough with the talking, now let's get started. Well, first of all, I will talk about the hardware and then I will dig into the software. Let's first talk about the display and you must be aware of the Moto display feature which is a battery friendly way to display notifications just like so and the most interesting part is you can even peek into the notifications. Moto display shows up when you pick up the phone and to check the notifications you need to press and hold on the notification bubble. This is how you can read the whole message without even unlocking the device. If you want to open the notification in app, you need to swipe up and to dismiss just swipe down. The notification won't show on the lock screen anymore. You can also swipe right or left to dismiss. Now you must be wondering how can I read the whole message when the phone is password locked? Well don't worry you can disallow the preview of messages on the lock screen. There you go the message with the thumbnail of the video I've shared. Now let me show you how can you customize the Moto display. Open your Moto application and there you have to enable this and also you can block applications from showing notifications which are bothering you and also if you don't want this feature to disturb you at night you can disable and this is where you can hide your sensitive notification content. So indeed a great feature. Now the 5.5 inches IPS panel on your Moto G4 Plus boasts of full HD resolution with 401 ppi. Well considering the brand and the price, full HD resolution on this mid-range device is making the G4 Plus one of the best mid-range. There you have the Galaxy J7 2016 with a 720p display and the Samsung device also cost more. Though Super AMOLED produces rich color and the viewing angles are also slightly better, but 267 ppi of J7 is not even close to 401 on the Moto G4 Plus. As you can see the white level on the IPS panel is more white that means more accurate colors and no oversaturation like Super AMOLED. There I have the ZUK Z1 which also features a full HD screen and I think both displays are almost same though the Z1's display is slightly better on viewing angles. One of the main reasons to get this phone is the camera. This is a 16 megapixel shooter with laser autofocus and powerful dual LED flash. This camera utilizes phase detection autofocus of premium DSLR cameras and as a result the focusing is sharp accurate and extremely fast, fastest in this segment and even comparable to the dual pixel autofocus of Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge. I have already uploaded the video sample and check the description below for the link. In this video I have demonstrated how fast is the autofocus so if you are recording a video of a moving subject then this is the best phone to do that. The video is also extremely sharp and the color rendering is also quite decent. The bokeh is also very beautiful. The maximum aperture is f2.0. Though it's not the fastest in this segment but it's good enough. The Galaxy J7 2016 sports f1.9 lens and the color rendering is also I think slightly punchier. Moto G4 Plus's video is over sharpened compared to this. On the other hand, I am not that much satisfied with the video capability of the Lenovo ZUK Z1. There is too much hunting and the video is also quite warm, less detailed compared to others and overall I am not that much impressed. Regarding still images, I think the J7 and the Moto G4 Plus are neck to neck. Of course, the autofocusing is faster on the G4 Plus and macro shots are more beautiful. But again, I think there is over sharpening or over processing and regarding indoor shots, images are very bright and quite detailed. There wasn't any issue with the autofocusing as well and compared to others, I think Moto G4 Plus's video looks cleaner. Though regarding noise handling, I think the Galaxy J7 performs slightly better. On the other hand, outdoor images are almost identical. 
well compared to zuk z1 z1's images are quite detailed but i think there is something wrong with the white balance or exposure with the camera it changes quite abruptly and the color tone is also not accurate I also want to mention here during video recording this phone becomes extremely hot. The temperature can go as high as 48 or 49 degrees celsius and the phone also starts to lag. If you already have this phone go outside shoot a 2 or 3 minutes video and check whether your phone also overheats or not. Now guys let's talk about the battery. Well you have a 3000 mAh battery on this phone and I'm getting around 1 day to 1.5 days of backup which is not bad for a smartphone of course but considering the Galaxy J7 or ZUK Z1 it's not that much impressive. The phone heats up during gaming or normal uses around 43 or 44 degrees celsius which is not that much serious but overheating drains battery as you know. Well there is no dedicated speaker on your Moto G4 Plus. The ear speaker works as the loudspeaker and it's actually loud enough for gaming and movies. It's louder than Galaxy J7s and slightly less powerful than the Z1 speaker. As it's front firing the speaker seems louder and overall I'm satisfied with the speaker quality. Nowadays smartphones have become a fashion statement that's why people buy iPhones for the look and for the brand. The Moto G4 Plus looks quite simple and smart from the front and the flat back is also not bad. Though a metal frame would have been really nice because this plastic frame attracts scratches and I suggest you to buy a case for this phone. The weight of this phone is just 155 gram which is quite lightweight and the back cover is nicely textured for a good grip of the device. If you compare it side by side with the Galaxy J7 2016, if you hold both devices in your two hands, you will prefer the solid feel and the metal frame of the J7. Let me also show you the Lenovo ZUK Z1 which is also a heavy device with metal frame but I really don't like the look and feel, the back looks quite fat and the screen to body ratio is also not good. It's just my personal opinion, you can choose the Z1 as well. It's really great to see a fingerprint sensor on the Moto device and interestingly it's not a home button just the sensor, there is no use of it when the screen is on. What I like most is the sensor works even when the display is off unlike Samsung Galaxy or iPhones. This sensor is extremely fast accurate and I've done a speed test in between this Moto G4 Plus and the iPhone 6s Plus. You will be really glad to know that the Moto device actually unlocks faster. It bypasses the lock screen and you don't have to press the button as well. So it's quite nice, though the button could have been actually on the back of the phone. Well as you know there are two variants of the phone. I've got the pricier one with 3GB of RAM. At this moment I'm getting 1.8GB free which is more than enough for multitasking or gaming. I don't suggest you to get the 2GB variant because then you will have around 800MB of free RAM. This variant also packs 32GB storage and for a device in this price category this is amazing, more than enough and you are also getting an SD card slot which is expandable up to 128GB. So the storage or RAM on this Moto G4 Plus is not an issue. Well though there are some custom features added into the phone, the interface is more or less stock android and as a result it's blazing fast, fastest in its class. I mean the interface is snappier than the Galaxy J7 or the ZUK Z1. I've done a speed test in between this phone and the Galaxy J7, check the description below for the link. Apps take almost no time to launch. On Anthodo 6 this device scores 45601 which is slightly lower than that the J7 and also the ZUK Z1. Let me show you. The Z1 packs an old 2.5 GHz Great 400 quad core processor whereas on the J7 you will find an octa core 1.59 GHz processor. This Moto device is the slowest with two quad core processors, one is at 1.52 and the other one is at 1.19 GHz. Interestingly on the 3D Mark Gamers benchmark, the score is better on the Moto device. Well there I have a new message and I want to show you that you can reply right away without launching the messaging app. 
so quite nice. Now despite having a full HD screen, gaming performance is quite smooth, I haven't noticed any type of lag and during gaming the phone heats up around 44 or 45 degrees celsius. I suggest you to watch the gaming review of this device. Overall if you are a gamer you can go for this device, you won't be disappointed. Though you can also consider the Galaxy J7 2016. As I just mentioned, the interface is more or less stock Android, you are getting some custom features which are cool, very handy and I am going to show you them one by one, you will definitely love this part. First of all, if you double tap the power key, you can launch the camera and this also locks the phone so you can lend the phone to your friends with peace of mind. This works even when the screen is off. There you go. A very handy feature. You might also know that you can launch the camera with a twist motion, just like so. You can also switch the camera with the same gesture. A really cool feature to show off to your friends. You can also shake the phone just like a handshake and the dual LED flash lights up as a torch. There I got a new call and when I pick up the device the ringtone actually stops and the phone also switches to vibration mode. You can also flip the phone to silence notifications and calls, that is you will enable the do not disturb mode. The do not disturb mode can be customized in a lot of ways, just go to your settings and sound and notifications, do not disturb. You can schedule this feature and also set your priority. If someone calls you twice within a period of 15 minutes, the phone can ring and you can also allow your favorite contacts and reminders. To enable the gestures I have just shown you, just go to your Moto app and check these four options. Now go to your settings menu and scroll down to users. Here you can enable the guest mode and also disallow phone calls for the guest. You can also add new users and rename. In the guest mode, all of your private data will be hidden, including your photos, videos and your applications. And after the setup, you can also switch to guest mode or other users you have added just by clicking here. Well, there is a quick tip for you. As you know, the navigation keys are hidden and you can swipe up to get them. But what you can do is you can tap on the fingerprint sensor and I think it's an easier way. Well, you cannot compose a message without adding the recipient which is quite weird. Now typing on this 5.5 inch screen with one hand might seem slightly big for some of you guys but the swipe input on the Google keyboard is the best in the world. So one handed typing is not an issue but if you are not typing in English then you can also switch on the one handed keyboard. Now one handed typing is a piece of cake. It's such a nice feature guys. Now this Google keyboard supports almost all the prime languages of India. You can switch the keyboard just like so. To add the languages just press and hold here and swipe up. Then enable the languages you want. Well I have already discussed about the camera quality. Now let me show you the interface. As I mentioned before, there is no focus or shutter lag. You can also tap and hold on the viewfinder and lock the focus and exposure in that area or you can also manually set the exposure. To switch back to autofocus, click on the lock icon. This phone can also capture slow motion videos at 540p in 120 fps. To enable quick capture that is double tap the power key for the camera, switch on this option. Well the camera is on for like 1 minute and the back of the phone is already heated up. The normal temperature for a smartphone is around 36 or 37 degrees celsius and as you can see indoor without any gameplay the temperature is as high as 44 degrees celsius. If you go outside the scenario is much worse. 
Well friends, we are almost at the end of this review and this Moto G4 Plus is not a flawless device but for 13,500 or 15,000 rupees what you are getting is worth every penny. I mean it's an all-in-one device with great camera, great display, great sound, fast fingerprint sensor, SD card slot and the Moto G series is more reliable than the ZUK. And considering the Galaxy J7, you are getting sub power display resolution and no fingerprint sensor. But the gaming performance is slightly better on the J7 and the phone actually does not heat up at all. Even if you play games for like 1 hour, the temperature does not even cross 42 degrees Celsius. So if you are a super hardcore gamer and want good battery backup, get the J7. Otherwise this Moto G4 Plus is the best phone to buy at this price point. Well friends that's all I have for you in this review, if you liked my review style then do subscribe and keep in touch for more interesting videos on this Moto G4 Plus. Thanks a lot guys for watching so far, check the description below for more videos.